proceed to the fifth chapter of Mormons, The Happy Prince by Oscar Wilde. Very beautiful and a very touching story. You shall know why am I telling you touching. First, let's know about the author. Oscar Wilde was a popular literary figure in late Victorian England. He was known for his brilliant wit, flamboyant style, flamboyant as in very impressive, very attractive and infamous imprisonment for homosexuality. In 1888, he published The Happy Prince and Other Tales, fairy stories written for his two sons. He especially wrote it for them. Wilde's greatest talent was for writing plays. He was a very good playwright. He produced a string of extremely popular comedies, including A Woman of No Importance, An Ideal Husband, and The Importance of Being Earnest. These plays were all highly acclaimed and firmly established Oscar as a playwright. He became very famous after these plays. He became very well known. So talking about the plot of the story, uh, let's go ahead. The Happy Prince is a story about a prince who used to be very happy when he was alive. So are we going to talk after his death as well? Let's watch. He learned about sorrow only after his death. Okay, so here we are. When his statue was placed at a high point from where the misery of the entire city could be seen. So you see, this is life after death and he was as a statue. We'll know at length, just wait for some time. Moved by the plight of the poor, plight as in the condition of the poor, the happy prince gave away all his possessions to the needy with the help of a kind swallow. Now swallow here is a bird. Swallow is not that swallow what we swallow the food. No, this swallow is, swallow is a bird. This compassionate bird sacrificed his life for the noble cause of the prince. The story is based on the theme that love and sacrifice are important values in human life and happiness comes to those who make others happy. So before I move on, come on, have you ever tried making others happy? Do you really think that you have the qualities of love and sacrifice within you? Think it over and let's move on. So, high above the city on a tall column, that's a pillar, stood the statue of the happy prince. He was gilded all over with thin leaves of fine gold. Gilded as in he was covered. He was totally covered with thin leaves of fine gold. For eyes, he had two bright sapphires and a large ruby glowed on his sword hilt. Hilt as in the handle of a tool. Here it's the sword. So on the handle, he had a nice large red ruby. Whereas for eyes, he had two bright sapphires and all over he was covered with thin leaves of gold. So he was really, really lavishly dressed up. One night, there flew over the city a little swallow. His friends had gone away to Egypt six weeks before, but he had stayed behind. Then he decided to go to Egypt too. Now, right now, he flew over the city, the, uh, the city of the happy prince. Swallow flew there. His friends had proceeded, you know, they are migratory birds. So he had gone, uh, his friends had gone to Egypt. In fact, six weeks before, but he had decided to, you know, stay back. So right now he was flying over the city of the happy prince and he decided to go to Egypt. He was on his way to Egypt. All day long he flew and at night time he arrived at the city. Where shall I put up? Now night he did not want to fly, obviously. So he's not a night bird. So he had to put up somewhere. He had to stay somewhere. I hope the town has made preparations, says now winter is coming. I hope I find some nice cozy place to put up. Then he saw the statue on the tall column. You know, from far, he could see that big statue right there. I will put up there, he cried. He says, oh, I think I should put up there. I'll stay there. I'll spend the night there. It is a fine position with plenty of fresh air. It's all open. So it's a nice place and there's plenty of fresh air. It'll be nice for me. So he alighted just between the feet of the happy prince. 
alighted as in descended from air. He was flying and so he went and landed over there where between the feet of the happy prince, the statue. I have a golden bedroom, he said. Why golden bedroom? You remember the statue was covered with thin leaves of fine gold. So yeah, he says, I have a golden bedroom, he said softly to himself with a very quiet and a gentle voice as he looked around and he prepared to go to sleep. So he was tired and he just was ready to go to sleep. But just as he was putting his head under his wing, so you know that's how these birds sleep. Just as he was about to do that, a large drop of water fell on him. Now he was ready to sleep and suddenly one drop of water falls on him. What a curious thing. I mean, why water? He cried, there is not a single cloud in the sky. The stars are quite clear and bright and yet it is raining. He says, oh my God, like what is this? It's raining. I mean, the skies are so clear. I can see the stars nice and bright and clear. So from where this water, where the rain? In fact, he did not say the word water. He said rain. Then another drop fell. What is the use of a statue if it cannot keep the rain off? He said, he says, why am I here? This statue is not even helping me to keep off from the rain. How am I protected here? I must look for a good chimney pot. He says, I need to change. So I'll look for a good chimney pot. And he determined to fly away. He made up his mind. He says, okay, I need to fly away from here. I cannot spend the night here. But before he had opened his wings, he was just thinking. And in the process, a third drop fell. And he looked up and saw, oh, what did he see? Can you guess what he saw? Well, if you haven't read the chapter, the eyes of the happy prince were filled with tears, the statue, and tears were running down his golden cheeks. Now, that, those were the drops which were actually falling on the bird, which was there settled between the feet of the happy prince. His face was so beautiful in the moonlight that the little swallow was filled with pity. That face, it glowed. It was so nice, you know, to see that face in the moonlight. And somewhere, you know, the swallow fell in love. He says, oh my God, why is he crying? He, you know, he felt bad for him. Who are you? He said, I am the happy prince. Why are you weeping then? Now, isn't that contradictory? He says, you're happy and then you're crying. So why are you crying? Asked the swallow. You have quite drenched me. Do you know you have literally made me wet? I am thoroughly wet. I am soaked so much. You have been crying. Your tears have been falling on me. I am literally wet. When Now here the prince is telling why he is crying. When I was alive and had a human heart, answered the statue, I did not know what tears were. For I lived in the palace where sorrow is not allowed to enter. So he started his story, he started explaining to the bird that, you know, I used to live in such a palace where sorrow was never allowed to enter. I was always happy. Everything was absolutely okay. He didn't even know what were tears. He had no idea because he had never got a chance to cry. He was always happy. My courtiers called me the happy prince. You know, the courtiers, the people who attend the royal court, the people who go there. And happy indeed I was. I was definitely happy. So I lived and so I died. Now that's how I lived my life and eventually I died. And now that I am dead, they have set me up here so high that I can see the ugliness and all the misery of my city. And though my heart is made of lead, yet I cannot choose but weep. Now he says, now because I was a prince, so when I died, they made a statue of mine and they put me on this pillar, this, you know, long column. And from here, I can see the entire city. I am right in the center. I am at the heart of the city. I can see the entire city and I can see all the ugliness, all the ugliness, all the misery of my city. Misery, this is a feeling or a state of getting, you know, great discomfort or mental distress. So he could see people in pain. He could see people in tears, which he had never seen before. He says, though my heart is made of lead. Now, 
my heart is not the real heart which beats like a normal human though it is made of lead it is not even the normal heart yet i cannot choose but weep i am so much touched by their pain that even if my heart is made of lead i still want to cry i i cannot stop i cannot control my tears what is he not solid gold said the swallow to himself he was too polite to make any personal remarks he says isn't he fully made of gold in and out how is he a human how is he crying i mean you know he was thinking to himself obviously he did not make these remarks to the prince but he kept wondering that how can he cry you know because he is made of gold so is he not fully gold how come his heart is feeling the pain far away continued the statue in a low musical voice far away in a little street there is a poor house one of the windows is open and through it i can see a woman seated at a table so now he is trying to tell the bird what he can see he says you know that far away there's a you know far in that little street there is a poor house there is a very uh, house in a very bad condition and one of the windows of that house is open and i can see through it that there is a woman sitting at a table her face is thin and worn she is very tired dull her face is very thin and she has coarse red hands all pricked by the needle for she is a seamstress so he says now her face is very dull she has coarse as in rough in texture red hands her hands are not smooth it's not smooth skin they are very rough her hands they are red why because they are pricked they are punctured or they are pierced or they are poked pricked poked by the needle why because she is a seamstress a woman who sew, who sews clothes who stitches clothes so she does that because of that she you know continuously uses a needle so her hands are very rough she is embroidering flowers on a satin gown for the loveliest of the queen's maids of honor to wear at the next court ball he says she is sitting and doing embroidery on a big nice royal satin gown whose gown is that for the loveliest of the queen's maids of honor maids of honor as an unnamed noble women attending to the queen so you know they used to be with the queen always so she is doing embroidery for her gown why because she is going to wear that at the next court ball that's a formal social gathering for dancing at the royal palace so there was a gathering there and this uh, queen's maid was going to wear that gown so that is what was being done by the seamstress in a bed in the corner of the room her little boy is lying ill now in a bed in the corner of the room there is a small bed and on that her little boy her son is there and he is ill he has a fever and is asking his mother to give him oranges now you know generally when we have fever we lose the taste of our mouth so this poor child he was down with fever he was not liking food so he asked his mom to get him some oranges his mother has nothing to give him but river water so he is crying now the mother is poor she doesn't have the money to go and buy those oranges and so she just gives him river water right they are so poor and so the child is crying because he wants to eat oranges he cannot eat anything else because he is not liking the taste swallow swallow little swallow will you not bring her the ruby out of my sword hilt my feet are fastened to this pedestal and i cannot move so now he makes a request to the bird he says swallow swallow little swallow can you do me a favor please take the ruby out of the handle of my sword there is one red ruby you remember take that ruby from there and go and give it to that lady i cannot move because my feet are stuck here they are stuck to the pillar i cannot move from here so please can you do me that favor take that ruby out of you know the handle of the sword and please go and give it to her at least she can sell it and you know buy some oranges for the son and also take care of herself i am waited for in egypt said the swallow my friends are flying up and down the nile and talking to the large lotus flowers soon they will go to sleep he says but i am not supposed to stay back here 
I am supposed to go to Egypt and there my friends are enjoying themselves. They are flying up and down the Nile River and soon they will go to sleep. They are even talking to the large lotus flowers. Now in Egypt at this point of time, you can see this, this, it's amazingly beautiful. That's the reason these birds migrate there because right now where they are staying, it's going to be winters and they cannot tolerate the winters, right? The prince asked the swallow to stay with him for one night and be his messenger. He says, look, just stay for one night. One night will not make a difference to you. Stay back and become my messenger. The boy is so thirsty and the mother so sad, he said. He says, just look at them. That poor child, he's thirsty. He cannot have those oranges. And the mother is sad because she cannot get him the oranges. I don't think I like boys, answered the swallow. I want to go to Egypt. He says, I don't think I like these boys. They're really very bad. And I'd rather go to Egypt instead of helping him. But the happy prince looked so sad that the little swallow was sorry. Now, when he said this line, the happy prince could do nothing. He was helpless. So he had a very sad look on his face. And so when the swallow looks at that, he says, okay, I think I need to do it. It is very cold here, he said, but he agreed to stay with him for one night and be his messenger. He says, look, it's very cold here. I have to quickly fly away from here. But okay, since you're requesting so much and I, ca I cannot see that sad face of yours. So yes, I will help you out. I will go and do it, but only for one night. Thank you, little swallow, said the prince. Now, this is the first help he did, the seamstress. Please keep that in mind because there are more. The swallow picked out the great ruby from the prince's sword and flew with it in his beak over the roofs of the town. Remember that place was very far. So yeah, he took the, you know, the ruby from the sword's hilt, from the handle, and he flew over the roofs of the town. He passed by the cathedral. Cathedral, you can see that's a cathedral. It's the principal church of a diocese with which the bishop is officially associated. So it is something similar to a church. Yeah. So the cathedral tower where the white marble angels were sculptured. You can see over there, it's made of marble and it's all, you know, uh, sculptured with that. He passed by the palace and heard the sound of dancing. Now this is his journey from the statue to that seamstress house. So he flew over the roofs. What did he come across first? He came across the cathedral tower on which you had the white marble angel sculptured. Then he passed by the palace where he heard the sound of dancing. A beautiful girl came out on the balcony with her lover. I hope my dress will be ready in time for the state ball, she said. Now she's telling her lover, I have got a beautiful dress made and I just hope I get it by then. I have ordered flowers to be embroidered on it, but the seamstresses are so lazy. Now you remember the seamstress, she was embroidering some flowers on a satin gown. So this is the same person she's talking about. I have ordered flowers to be embroidered on it, but the seamstresses are so lazy. I wonder if she'll give it to me, you know, just in time for me to wear it over there. He passed over the river and saw the lanterns hanging on the masts of the ship. Now, after when he saw that mean little girl in the balcony, I mean, she was talking so badly for the seamstress saying they are lazy, whereas the seamstress was, you know, in so much pain, in so much trouble. So that's what the bird came across. Now he passes over the river and saw the lanterns hanging on the masts of the ship. Masts, you know what they are, you know, those tall upright posts on a ship generally carrying a sail or sails. You know, they have the large sail on it. So yeah, he came across that. At last, he came to the poor woman's house and looked in. So uh, friends, better remember the journey of the bird right from the statue where till the seamstress house. So he came across these things. Please keep it in mind. Now he finally reaches the seamstress house and he looks in. The boy was tossing feverishly on his bed. He was tossing as in you move or you cause to move from side to side or back and forth. He was, you know, moving because he was uneasy. He was not feeling good. 
So yes, he was tossing feverishly on his bed and the mother had fallen asleep. She was so tired. She was trying to finish that gown so that if she would finish it, she would get some money and then she would, you know, get something for her son. In he hopped and laid the great ruby on the table beside the woman's thimble. Now what he did was he got in. She was sleeping. The boy was, you know, not really feeling good. So what he did was he kept, he laid the great ruby on the table beside the woman's thimble. Now here what you can see is a thimble. This is the thimble. Thimble is like, you know, just like the lid of a toothpaste, the cap of a toothpaste. Uh, these uh, seamstresses, you know, they wear it on this. So when they do the stitching, you know, they don't hurt themselves. They don't prick themselves. So her thimble was always there. Then he flew gently round the bed, fanning the boy's forehead with his wings. Now he was feeling bad for the bird. So, you know, he goes round him. And, you know, he was flapping his wings, so that boy was getting some breeze. He was fanning the boy's forehead with his wings. How cool I feel, said the boy. I must be getting better. And he sank into a delicious slumber. First, he was very restless. Then as the bird flapped his wings, his forehead became a little cooler. He felt maybe the fever is coming down. And then finally, he sank into a delicious slumber delicious slumber as in deep sleep that's how he felt then the swallow flew back to the happy prince and told him what he had done he came and explained to him exactly what happened it is curious he remarked but i feel quite warm now although it is so cold just can you tell me what this line means he says it's curious it's very strange now though it's very cold here but after what I have done and come, I feel so nice and warm. Why was he feeling nice and warm? Because he had become the reason for someone's smile. He had done something good. It was a good deed. That is why he was feeling happy and he was feeling warm, though it was very cold. That is because you have done a good action, said the prince. And the little swallow began to think and then fell asleep. Thinking always made him sleepy. So he was wondering, he says, oh, I have done something good. So that's why I'm feeling good about it. And while he was thinking, he soon fell asleep because that's what made him sleepy. When day broke, he flew down. Day broke as in sunrise, when it was morning. He flew down to the river and had a bath. Tonight I go to Egypt, said the swallow, and he was in high spirits at the prospect. He says, okay, so to, tonight I am definitely flying to Egypt. Yes, and he felt so good about the fact that finally I am going. He visited all the monuments and sat a long time on top of the church steeple. He visited all the monuments, you know, in the city of the happy prince. And then he went and sat a long time on top of the church steeple. Now steeple is a spire on top of a church tower or roof. It's right on top, you know, just the peak there. He went and sat over there. When the moon rose, he flew back to the happy prince. Finally, it was night. So he went back to the happy prince to bid him goodbye. Have you any commissions for Egypt? He cried, I am just starting. Any commissions as in any instructions, commands or roles given to a person or group. So he says, do you want me to do anything in Egypt? There I can do for you because right now I am starting my journey. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you stay with me one night longer? He says, can you stay one more night with me? I am waited for in Egypt, answered the swallow. There my friends are waiting for me. I need to head back. I need to go. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Far away across the city, I see a young man in a garret. In a garret is a top floor or an attic room, especially a small dismissal one. So you see where you have the top roof, you know, it's a roof, a room in the roof like of uh, a house. That is how it is. In a garret, he is leaning over a desk covered with papers and in the glass by his side, there is a bunch of withered violets. 
Now, just as he uh, requested him, he says, you know what, very far from here across the city, I see this gentleman there in a garret. He is a, a young man in the garret in that, you know, attic room, that room in the roof. And he is leaning over a desk. He's, his head is on the desk covered with papers. And in the glass by his side, there are some dry violets. Violets, uh, dry and shriveled violets, you know, those flowers. So he's saying he's looking in such a bad shape. His hair is brown and crisp and his lips are red as a pomegranate and he has large and dreamy eyes. So now he is describing that young man. He says, you know, his hair are red and, you know, they are, I mean, sorry, they're brown and crisp because maybe he's not taken a bath since long. He's not well. His lips are as red as a pomegranate. You know, when your lips, uh, when they dry up, they become like that. And he has large and dreamy eyes. He's looking very dull in his eyes too. He is trying to finish a play for the director of the theater, but he is too cold to write anymore. He's trying to write a play. He wants to give, you know, he's a play writer and he's trying to write a play so that he can give it to the director of the theater, but he is too cold to write it anymore. He's feeling very cold. He cannot write any further. There is no fire in the grate. He's saying there is no fire that can keep him warm. He's right on top, so he must be very cold. And hunger has made him faint. He is so hungry that he has fainted. He has nothing to eat. He is famished. So please, can we do something about him? I will wait with you one night longer. Now that swallow had a very sweet heart. She could not see the sadness, uh, you know, in the eyes of the happy prince. So she agrees. She says, okay, I will wait with you one night longer, said the swallow, who really had a good heart. He asked if, she, if he should take another ruby to the young playwright. He said, now, do you want me to take another ruby to the young playwright? By the way, did they, was there one more ruby? Do you remember? No, there was only one ruby in the sword handle. And what did he have for his eyes? Sapphires, right? So, alas, I have no ruby now, said the prince. My eyes are all that I have left. They are made of rare sapphires, which were brought out of India a thousand years ago. He ordered the swallow to pluck out one of them and take it to the playwright. Now he says, my ruby is gone. I had only one. But yes, I do have my eyes and they are made of sapphires, right? And which sapphires? They are rare sapphires. They had come from India. Oh, we proud Indians. They had come from India a thousand years ago. So yes, you can take one of them. He ordered the swallow to pluck out one of them and take it to the playwright, the playwriter. He will sell it to the dweller and buy firewood and finish his play, he said. He says he will sell the, I mean, the sapphire, get some money, get the firewood, get some food, and manage to finish his play. Dear prince, said the swallow, I cannot do that. And he began to weep. He says, how can I pluck out your eyes? That is where you see from. So he says, no, I cannot do that. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Do as I command you. I am the prince. I command you. Please do it. I order you. So the swallow had no choice. He plucked out the prince's eye and flew away to the young man's garret. He says, okay. So he did the needful. He took the sapphire, one of the prince's eye, and he went to the young man's garret. It was easy enough to get in as there was a hole in the roof. It was definitely very easy. Why? Because in the roof, you know, where he was, there was a hole. So he got in from there. Through this, he darted and came into the room. He just, zoop, he went in and he was in the room. The young man had his head buried in his hands. His head was like that. It was buried in his hands. So he did not hear the flutter of the bird's wings. So when the bird flew in, the, uh, you know, the young man, he did not hear the sound of the bird's wings. And when he looked up, he found the beautiful sapphire lying on the withered violets. So when he woke up 
Finally, he just managed to get up and the moment he got up, he saw the sapphire there. It was lying on the withered violets. It was lying there on the dried flowers. I am beginning to be appreciated, he cried. This is from some great admirer. Now I can finish my play and he looked quite happy. So here he says, oh wow, a sapphire. I'm sure some admirer of mine has given this and gone. Thank God someone is appreciating my plays now. And he says, now I can definitely finish my play. And he looked very happy. He says, now I can sell this and get some money and finish my play. The next day, now that was to the young man in the garret. Remember, first was the seamstress. Seamstress got what? The red ruby from the sword's handle. Next was this young man, right? This young man got one of the eyes, sapphire. Now, the next day the swallow flew down to the harbor. He sat on the mast of a large vessel and watched the sailors working. Now again it was morning, so he went to the harbor and he sat on the mast of a, you know the mast is that thing which they, uh, you have it generally on the post, that flag type thing of a large vessel and he watched the sailors working. I am going to Egypt, cried the swallow, but nobody minded. And when the moon rose, he flew back to the happy prince. So there he was sitting happy that, oh, finally, at least today I will definitely fly to Egypt, but nobody bothered. So yeah, in the night again, he flew back to the happy prince. I have come to bid you goodbye, he cried. He says, now it's a final farewell. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me one night longer? Now the prince is still sad for some other reason. It is winter, answered the swallow, and the snow will soon be here. In Egypt, the sun is warm on the green palm trees and the crocodiles lie in the mud and look lazily about them. He says, my dear friend, here it's soon going to be a snowfall. There will be snow here and I will not be able to tolerate it. I cannot. So I have to go to Egypt. Why? Because there the sun is nice and warm on the green palm trees. In fact, even the crocodiles come out of the water and they lay in the mud and they enjoy the, you know, the warmth of the sun. They lazily sit about them. In the square below, now before she, you know, before the uh, swallow could say anything else, the prince says, in the square below, said the happy prince, there stands a little match girl. Match girl as in the girl who sells matchsticks. She has let her matches fall in the gutter and they are all spoiled. She is standing there. Now she sells matchsticks, but by chance, her matchsticks have fallen in the gutter and they have all got spoiled. Her father will beat her if, he, if she does not bring home some money and she is crying. Now, if she does not sell those matchsticks, she will not get money. If she does not get money, her father will beat her up. And so she is crying. She has no shoes or stockings and her little head is bare. She does not have any shoes and stockings. She is bare feet. She doesn't even have a hat or a cap on. Even her head is bare. Pluck out my other eye and give it to her and her father will not beat her. So after describing that poor condition of the girl, she has nothing good on. I mean, you know, enough even to have a pair of shoes. So, you know, he tells him, look, please take my other eye and go and give it to that girl. And her father will not beat her because she will have enough money. I will stay with you one night longer. Remember, this swallow has a real golden heart. So he says, okay, I will stay with you one night longer, but I cannot pluck out your eye. You would be quite blind then. He says, if I pluck your second eye, you will not be able to see anything. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Do as I command you. I am ordering you to do it. Just do it. So he plucked out the prince's other eye because now he was left with no option and darted down with it. Darted as in you move or run somewhere suddenly or rapidly. He took it and he zoop, he went. He just darted his way. 
he swooped past the match girl now swoop now this is the girl and this is the bird so he swooped like this this is called swooping so he swooped as in move rapidly downwards through the air and slipped the jewel into the palm of her hand so as she was standing he just swooped he you know left the jewel on her palm and he flew back what a lovely bit of glass cried the little girl and she ran home laughing now for her it was a piece of glass it's a sapphire she's not even aware she's innocent she knows nothing so she calls it a bit of glass a piece of glass and she takes it and she goes home laughing she's like happy then the swallow came back to the prince you are blind now he said so i will stay with you always he says now i did what you want me to do but now you're blind you cannot even see anything i am definitely not leaving you in this condition i am going to stay with you for good no little swallow said the poor prince you must go away to egypt he says no no don't stay with me soon there will be winters how will you manage you will die please leave you cannot stay with me no i will stay with you always said the swallow and he slept at the prince's feet he says i'm sorry i am not leaving you in this condition i am going to be very much here with you and then he went and slept at the prince's feet all the next day he sat on the prince's shoulder and told him stories of what he had seen in strange lands so now he was sitting there now he had to spend time with the prince because uh you know prince could not see anything so what uh, what the swallow does is he goes and he sits on his shoulder and then he sits and talks to him and then he's sharing with him all the different experiences he's had he's flown to different different lands so he was sharing all what he had seen dear little swallow said the prince you tell me of marvelous things but more marvelous than anything is the suffering of men and women he's saying you are talking about all the things you saw this you saw that but you know if you notice if you see the men the suffering of the men and the women that's more important that's something worth noticing there is no mystery so great as misery he's saying there is nothing greater than pain the pain that they are going through the sorrow that they are going through fly over my city little swallow and tell me what you see there he says now i cannot see so you fly over the city and you tell me what is going on around where all you know who all are suffering so the swallow flew over the great city and saw the rich making merry in their beautiful houses while the beggars were sitting at the gates now he saw he saw the rich people were enjoying they were having fun in their houses in their beautiful houses while the poor people the beggars who had no money who used to you know beg for some money they were sitting at the gates He flew into the dark lanes and saw the white faces of starving children looking out listlessly at the black streets. He went into those lanes where the children were starving. Their faces were white because there was no blood. There was no blood. Why? Because there was no food in their stomach. They had no money. So he saw those children lying there looking so blankly at the streets, you know, the dark streets around. under the archway of a bridge you know that arch of a bridge that's the arch two little boys were lying in each other's arms to try and keep themselves warm they did not have warm clothes so the two of them were clinging to each other you know they were so close to each other they were lying in each other's arms so that they could feel warm enough how hungry we are they said You must not lie here shouted the watchman and they wandered out into the rain they were extremely hungry they were feeling cold and there the watchman comes and says hello you cannot lie here move from here just go away and the poor little souls they had to move out and it was raining imagine they were already feeling cold they were feeling hungry and now it was the rain so they were going through so much of misery so much of pain Then he flew back and told the prince what he had seen. So he went and described the same scene to the prince. I am covered with fine gold, said the prince. You must take it off leaf by leaf and give it to the poor. The living always think that gold can make them happy. 
he says you know what now i don't my ruby is gone the sapphires are gone i do have these you know thin leaves of fine gold so you go on taking one one leaf and you go on giving it to these poor people because what i believe is you know when for them gold is really you know it will make them happy it makes them happy because uh, when they are living you you can do anything with that gold leaf after leaf of the fine gold the swallow picked off till the happy prince looked quite dull and grey so to all the poor people wherever he could come across whomever he could come across he went on giving those leaves and finally all the leaves were off the statue and now the statue was dull and grey leaf after leaf of the fine gold he brought to the poor and the children's faces grew rosier rosier means colored pink or red typically as an indication of health or youth yeah so you when you are happy you know you you can see that on the face when you have good health it's on the face see when you fall sick how your face becomes pale and dull right but when you're healthy it's nice and glowing so they were happy now they got food to eat so their faces became rosier and they laughed and played in the street now they were those normal people they were in, they also were enjoying themselves just like the rich people we have bread now they cried says we have something to eat now bread is not literally bread but yes something to eat now they were so happy then the snow came and after the snow came the frost soon it was snowfall it was winter time remember the swallow was saying it was snow was expected very soon there the streets looked as if they were made of silver the streets were covered with snow they were covered with frost so it was looking like it's made of silver everybody went about in furs and the little boys wore scarlet caps and skated on the ice now everyone had to put on fur coats because you cannot you know manage in winters without those fur coats they are nice heavy and warm they keep you nice and warm so yes everybody was dressed in those coats and the little boys wore scarlet that's brilliant red color caps and they skated on the ice they did ice skating the poor little swallow grew colder and colder remember i told you that this bird cannot survive in winters so this bird started getting colder and colder but he would not leave the prince he was so attached he got so bonded with that prince he did not leave even if he was feeling so cold imagine this bird so selfless what do i mean by selfless selfless is the opposite of selfish yeah selfish is when you people just think about yourselves when any one thinks just first about themselves then about the others oh first i want to make sure that i fill my stomach then whatever is left i will share it with my brother that's being selfish but selfless oh first let my brother eat let him fill his tummy then whatever is left if left i will have it that's being selfless you are first thinking about others then about yourself and this is exactly what the swallow did selfless love he loved him too well he picked up crumbs outside the baker's door you know what are crumbs right when you eat biscuit when you eat bread those small tiny particles that fall those are crumbs so he picked up those crumbs outside the baker's door when the baker was not looking and tried to keep himself warm by flapping his wings what could he eat he survived on those crumbs right and he kept himself warm by flapping his wings how much he could but at last he knew that he was going to die he knew he cannot survive any longer because as the winters went on rising he knew it it's not possible to live any longer he had just enough strength to fly up to the prince's shoulder once more he was lying at the feet somehow he gathered some strength he flew up to the prince's shoulder once again goodbye dear prince he murmured will you let me kiss your hand he says goodbye so the prince is like and he says will you let me kiss your hand i am glad that you are going to egypt at last little swallow so the the prince feels that you know swallow is going to egypt that's why he's come to say goodbye you have stayed too long here but you must kiss me on the lips for i love you he says you have stayed so much time with me 
my every request you have granted you have done everything what i asked you to do you have even stayed with me when you were not supposed to so you know it's not my hand i love you so dearly you can kiss me on the lips it is not to egypt that i am going said the swallow the swallow says i am not coming i have not come to tell you goodbye because i am flying to egypt that's not the reason i am going to the house of death he says i am not going to egypt i am going to die i am going to the house of death death is the brother of sleep is he not this is death is sleep forever we sleep we wake i mean we sleep in the night and we wake up in the morning but death is sleep forever we never wake up again and he kissed the happy prince on the lips and fell down dead at his feet that is all the time he had he kissed him on his lips and he fell on his feet at that moment a curious crack sounded inside the statue as if something had broken can you just imagine what must have broken a curious crack sounded inside the statue there was a sound inside the statue as if something had broken the fact is that the leaden heart you know the the heart made of lead his heart was made of lead had snapped right into two snapped as in it had broken suddenly and completely with a sharp cracking sound his heart broke why because the swallow bid goodbye and he died and the prince could not take it he definitely could not take it and his heart broke the same moment the swallow died it certainly was a dreadfully hard frost dreadfully is very bad extremely bad frost it was very very cold very very cold early the next morning the mayor was walking in the square below in company with the town councillors now the mayor of the town was walking around he had his own people you know his own uh, town councillors also with him so he was looking around his town as they passed the column you know the pillar where the happy prince was he looked up at the statue he suddenly looked up at the statue dear me how shabby the happy prince looks he said shabby as in very poor condition old and worn why because the leaves were gone the the sapphires were gone the ruby was gone so obviously he was dull and gray so the mayor said oh my god he is not at all in a good condition how can we keep him like this over here how shabby indeed cried the town councillors who always agreed with the mayor and they went up to look at it oh yes it's definitely shabby and so they went up to look at it all of them the town councillors because they always agreed to whatever the mayor said the ruby has fallen out of his sword his eyes are gone and he is golden no longer said the mayor in fact he is little better than a beggar he says everything is gone and you remember the ruby from the sword the sapphires from the eyes the golden leaves everything he had given to all the people who needed it in fact he is little better than a beggar he is just as good as a beggar little better than a beggar said the town councillors you know they would repeat whatever they would repeat and they would agree with whatever the mayor said and here is actually a dead bird at his feet continued the mayor we must really issue a proclamation that birds are not to be allowed to die here how the strange mayor he says we are going to put up a proclamation as in a public or a official announcement about a matter of great importance he says we are going to definitely do that so that no bird is allowed to die here now is it possible do you know where you are going to die or who is going to die where he says i am going to you know get that thing issued and the town clerk made a note of the suggestion the town clerk was also with the town councillors so he wrote it down so they pulled down the statue of the happy prince they pulled it down as in they demolished they broke it up from there and they br brought it down from the pillar as he is no longer beautiful he is no longer useful said the art professor at the university he says now that he is no longer beautiful he is no longer useful when he was beautiful people were attracted 
tourists used to come they used, people used to come and see him right because he was so glorious he was so beautiful then because of the you know all the gold and he used to look so good but now because that is not there he is no longer useful we might as well remove him from there then they melted the statue in a furnace you know what's a furnace it's an enclosed structure to heat materials to very high temperatures so because you know that statue was made of metal that metal was put into that furnace where there's big fire and the metal totally melted they are very high temperatures to heat the materials and then they melt so this is how it was what a strange thing said the overseer of the workmen at the foundry now when this statue was being burnt inside he, the overseer is the supervisor and the workmen the people who work over there the labor the foundry is what the workshop for casting metal so he says oh my god what a strange thing he says the supervisor says to the labor at the place where they were casting metal this broken lead heart will not melt in the furnace we must throw it away he says oh this broken lead heart this you know lead this heart which was made of lead it is not melting how strange is that the whole statue has melted why not the heart i mean even lead is a metal that can also melt but it has not melted let's just throw it away so they threw it on a dust heap where the dead swallow was also lying you know they had brought the dead swallow also so that dust heap they had thrown the bird also there and they threw the heart also over there bring me the two most precious things in the city said god to one of his angels and the angel brought him the leaden heart and the dead bird top you know in the house of god he tells his angels he says listen get me the two most precious things in the city whatever you find precious you get me those two things and what were the most precious things it was the statue's heart the happy prince's heart and the swallow the little bird you have rightly chosen said god for in my garden of paradise this little bird shall sing forevermore and in my city of gold the happy prince shall praise me he says he tells the angel you know what you have got just the right things these two are most precious because they have a heart made of gold they are such beautiful people they are ready for sacrifice they have all the love for the people you remember we had spoken of love and sacrifice they had made other people happy they were not selfish they were not greedy and so the bird shall sing in my paradise in my garden of paradise this bird shall sing forever more right shall always be there and in my city of gold the happy prince shall praise me he says he is going to be there and he shall keep praising me forever so this is where you know the result of love sacrifice comes what did they eventually get see they were not doing it with a reason that they will get something back but they got what they deserved and they deserved this it was something so beautiful which very rarely can anyone deserve because you have to be that good the purpose of life is not to be happy it is to be useful to be honorable to be compassionate to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well very well said by ralph waldo emerson he says you don't have to be happy the purpose of life is not to be happy it is to be useful to be honorable to be kind to be compassionate to make others happy to make a difference in someone's life don't just think about yourselves stop it once you start thinking about others god starts thinking about you he takes care of you yes that's a sure shot thing it is very very true so make sure you are the reason for someone else's smile make people around you really happy you know just make a difference in their lives try it there are many different ways of doing it of course the happy prince did all the gold and stuff for you it is how you can make them happy in very small meaningful effective ways 
whenever you see them in trouble, help them out. Yes, keep doing it and you shall attain happiness forever. Yes, so for the same, keep watching and keep learning.